Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about another Brandon Sanderson book. This one is going to be from his All Ages category. This is going to be the final book in the Alcatraz series, which is called Bastille vs. the Evil Librarians. So, we're going to talk kind of non-spoilery thoughts real quick and then going to jump over to some spoiler thoughts where you can talk in a little bit more detail. So, as always, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and let's begin. So, Bastille versus the Evil Librarians. This one is really, really fun. I like it a lot. It's reading it shortly after I read um, Tress of the Emerald Sea kind of primed me perfectly for this type of Brandon um, storytelling because he is having so much fun when you write these books. Him and Jancy, I hope she got in on the fun too because Brandon continues to use these books as a way to kind of add commentary about his thoughts on writing and the career of being a writer and just the some of the idiosyncrasies of the nature of being a writer and stuff like that. And it's just a lot of fun commentary. It's so much fun and the tone of it is kind of similar to the tone he used for Tress of the Emerald Sea. So I was very much primed for it and I was really happy for it because it's been a long time since he finished the first four or first five books in the series and it's been a while since I finished reading them. So there is a huge gap in between these books to the point where I kind of lost some of the feeling of the other ones like the tone and the inner voice and all that stuff. So having read Tress of the Emerald Sea, it kind of put me back in that same um, frame, even though that one's a little bit more mature than the humor in this one. But it's kind of it's similar enough that I was basically able to get right back into it. So this one continues the story of Alcatraz and their fight against the evil librarians, except this time this one is told from Bastille's point of view because of the way the previous book ended, where um, our main character Alcatraz is basically lamenting that he is a failure and can't do all the things that he needs to do and he's not the chosen one and all these teenage angsty type things or preteen angsty type things. So it, it's a really cool change of pace because we get the total other perspective. But the only thing about it is, this story is very short. It doesn't really feel like a full book. It really feels like Bastille essentially took over the storytelling to tell the end of the story. Because that's what this feels like. It's not a, um in-depth story. It's not as involved as some of the other books were. Even though those were very straightforward. It was very much, we have to do this thing. There is this thing. Let's go do the thing. We do the thing. And that's the end of the book. It's just very much like that. It's not like how Brandon does the, you know, winding road to get to the conclusion kind of thing. This is just very linear, straight line, but just with all kinds of commentary and jokes and just snarky remarks all throughout. So I love how Brandon uses Bastille's um, ignorance of writing books basically as a way for him to make commentary on different little things about the, you know, publishing and all that kind of stuff. So she talks about having a literary license that gives her the ability to just say all kinds of nonsense and do whatever and stuff. And she basically breaks the fourth wall to tell the uh, reader, like, if you have a problem with it, you can try to steal my literary license. So good luck getting it from me and all this kind of stuff. So it's, like, it's just a lot of that kind of stuff. The story itself is very straightforward. It's very kind of clean, but it's a little bit um, it's kind of, I don't know, this is something I've honestly come to expect in like all ages or young, like very young kind of middle grade stuff like this where something will feel like there's huge stakes but then by the end of it we kind of have to reverse it because in my mind all ages or middle grade stuff has to still have that popcorn, bubblegum happiness kind of thing at the end, you know? So major consequences that we would have faced in any other kind of story either are not faced here or just completely reversed even when they're like used as a fake out previously. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in the spoilers. But that's probably my only real negative of the story. I think it's a great middle grade book and I'm trying to get my nephew into reading them. But all he cares about is Transformers and Jurassic Park. This boy does not care about reading books yet. So hopefully we can get him into that. My niece is on her way, but she's mostly about manga. So, but yeah, <laughs> like, so I'm trying to find more of these kind of books to help, you know, get the next generation into reading. I'm trying to basically be a fantasy world pusher. I'm trying to get everybody to get into fantasy books so I have more people in real life to talk about it with. You know, I love talking to all of you about all the fantasy stuff and all the Brandon stuff and all that. So that'll definitely continue. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump into spoilers so I can talk in a little bit more detail about Bastille versus the Evil Librarians. So if you haven't read it, I suggest you go ahead and read it or read it to your little brother or nephew or niece or someone like that. And it'll be a lot of fun. 
well, probably an entire series to read them is probably a lot, but you know what I mean. So yeah, let's go ahead and talk spoilers. All right, so this is spoiler section. So my main thing that I kind of dislike about the way Brandon ended the story is that he set up some major consequences at the end of the fifth book where like all the Symmetries lose their talents, like um, where uh, Alcatraz breaks the talents and no one has their abilities anymore. And his father has just been sacrificed. He's killed. They're really losing against Biblio Den and all this. And it's just like, you know, final hour, like they're up against the ropes and all this stuff. And a lot of this stuff is described and explained in such a way during the previous book that make you feel like it's permanent. Like when Grandpa Smedry gets killed in the previous book, they basically explicitly say like he he didn't arrive late to it like he had no way to dodge it or deal with it because the powers were gone and all this kind of stuff but in this one it's almost immediately reversed it's like no yeah in a moment like that his talent couldn't totally abandon him so it like came at the last last moment so he will always at some point be like he's always going to be arriving late to that bullet so at some point that bullet will catch up to him and he will die but as we can tell by the end of the book Alcatraz grows up getting married and Grandpa Smedry's still around so it's probably yet until he's going to die a ripe old age before that bullet actually catches up with him which kind of makes it a non-consequence and then same thing with the talents Alcatraz breaks the talents because he's been blaming them and all this kind of stuff and like was you know resent resentful and whatnot and apparently the talents much like a lot of Brandon's things it's, it's a conglomerate mass of energy that has essentially taken on some form of sapience or sentience to the point where the talents feel the resentment from Alcatraz. So that's why they broke, because they abandoned him because he was blaming the talents for everything. So basically, in order to fix that, all he had to do was apologize. So everybody's basically back full power with greater control over their abilities while they go and deal with all this stuff. And... It's just, the entire plan that Biblio did had, like, yes, it seems kind of threatening and stuff, but it was very, very straightforward. It was just very, let's use all this power to kill everybody or something. Actually, it's not even clear if that's what he was doing because there's, like, a lot of logic holes that they kind of poke in it at the end, like, where that wouldn't be a great idea. He could have been satisfied with just the people who was ruling and, like, this kind of stuff. It seems like, based on his comment, though, he was going to change the world to where the Smedries had never existed. So... I guess that's a big deal. I don't know. So it just didn't really feel like a huge deal to me. So the solution of the problem was basically to kind of do exactly what I thought was going to happen from the beginning was this idea of the powers being called talents and a lot of the abilities being just kind of exasper or exaggerated versions of regular things like tripping or bad dancing, being bad at math and like that kind of stuff. So in the end, when they say they're essentially going to release all the energy that's built up and put it in every single person on the planet and give them all like a tiny uh, talent like i was like okay that's exactly what i would think and that's kind of cool because a lot of the talents are analogous to some of the stuff that people really deal with like constantly stubbing your toe or forever losing your keys and like that kind of stuff so they kind of explain in the book that that's essentially where we're going for everybody else on the planet has some sort of small talent like that so that this build up of energy won't constantly just be building up and have to be dealt with just by the Smedry family but now it's kind of got you know it's less pressure because it's being shared by everybody on the planet so that's a cool solution and a cool happy ending and everything and the bonus is that the Smedries don't even lose the potency of their power so they still have all their abilities at regular strength and the rest of the world now is helping hold the burden and everything and the librarians are going to be reformed to the point where maybe eventually it'll start telling the truth to the Hushlanders and stuff like that which I think is a lot of fun because some of the stuff they claim is just so outlandish that if you were to like make that public knowledge to everybody <laughs> just the results of it would be hilarious and i would love to see that so <laughs> it was just a lot of fun i really really dig the way brandon writes the story the story itself is kind of medium you know i'm well past uh, middle grade books so the plot isn't as juicy isn't as meaty and thick as i would really like but just the way Brandon writes it makes up for all of that. It is complete and total enjoyment because you really get to see his head. You really get to understand his perspective on writing and publishing and all this stuff. His um, school lectures when he was teaching classes in um, Arizona, I think, or wherever he was teaching, doing like a creative... Uh, he was teaching a class and a lot of his lectures are on YouTube and some of the stuff in there, it kind of comes through in this in a lot of ways. And it feels like 
some of the comments and the, the conversations on publishing and stuff that he was having in those classes, he really gets to kind of let his hair down, per se, and kind of just be snarky and kind of joke or make inside jokes and throw a little throw shade and stuff like that. So it's just a lot of fun. That's my definitely my favorite part about the series. I definitely recommend it if you want something very leisurely, like not, you know, the heavy you know, um, theory crafting or deep story or nothing like just some fun, light, fluffy kind of thing. If you're still in the middle grade books and stuff like that, occasionally it's right there on the same level as Percy Jackson to me, it's down to the relationship with, um, Alcatraz and Bastille, their relationship is so Percy Annabeth to me. It has the exact same vibes. It's just as fun and it's really, really well done. So I definitely recommend it. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end it there, so um, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and if you've read this new uh, Alcatraz or Bastille versus the Evil Librarians books, let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of it, how do you feel about Brandon's middle grade book writing and stuff, and how do you think, what parts do you think were really Jancy's versus Brandon's, I would really like to know your opinion on that, so yeah, I will talk to you all next time, <laughs> peace.